Hi there, and welcome back. It's Jennifer McGuire. So I've been getting a few requests to do a video that talks more about using mini ink cubes, and I thought I would do so today. So in this video, I'm going to talk about mini ink cubes, tips for getting good results using them, and also some fun techniques that you can do just with the cubes. Now, ink cubes are becoming more and more popular, and it's a great way to get more colors for less money. I'm going to be focusing on reverse confetti ink cubes today. This is one of my favorite ink lines because the colors are absolutely so beautiful. Now I haven't bought all of the ink cubes yet, so you don't see the complete color line here. These just happen to be the colors that I have. And I have them organized in my Organize More mini ink cube tray, which is fantastic. You can stack these or keep them in drawers. Now I do have all the reverse confetti ink pads in the full pad size, so I can show you all the colors that are available. You don't need both the full and the mini ink cube sizes of an ink because they are the same ink. I just happened to get the full size pads first and wanted to have the mini ink cubes to show you in videos. Here you can see all the beautiful unique colors that reverse confetti has to offer. I talked about these in my favorite crafty things video and their black ink is one of my favorite black dye inks. So I'm going to be using just a few of these colors today and I'm going to go for some really bold and colorful cards. Before we start stamping, I want to show you the stamp set that I'm using. This is the reverse confetti heart filled sentiment stamp set. Now this has some fun Valentine's messages, but also some greetings that can be used throughout the year. I really like the love you lots and love you to pieces. And those are the two that I'm going to use mostly today. Let's first look at the best way to ink up with a large ink pad. Then I'll show you some tips for mini ink cubes. When you ink up with a large ink pad, sometimes it's easiest to just take the stamp to the ink pad, but you usually get better results if you lay your stamp upside down and ink the ink pad from above. This way you get even pressure or you're more likely to get even pressure. When I'm stamping with clear stamps, I like to ink up over white cardstock so I can see through and make sure I have even coverage of ink on my stamp. Now with an ink cube, you have to really be a little more careful before stamping. What I like to do is first go across the stamp, pressing pretty firmly with the ink pad. Then I repeat it, but kind of dab the ink pad lightly across the stamp, and then I stamp it. By doing it lightly at the end, I can make sure I get any blobs of ink that might have occurred from the edge of the ink pad. And I find I get better results that way. So here I'll do it again. I'm inking it pretty, pretty firmly here, not super firmly, but generously. Then I go back and I do it again lightly. And you always want to dab your ink pads onto your stamps. And there you can see you can get similar results from both. Now I do want to mention before we go on to a technique that it is important to get a high quality ink. This reverse confetti ink is great, so I know that the ink cube will be just as good as the full ink pad size. Now I, it's hard to tell you which inks are the highest quality, but I will say that if you see an ink cube used in my video, you can know it's one that's good because I've tested them out. Also, I do recommend a good quality cardstock. I use Nina Classic Crest in the 110 pound, and that way I know that I'll get my best stamped results. The cardstock is just as important as the ink. Okay, I wanted to show you a fun technique that's easy to do with ink cubes, but not so easy to do with full ink pads. So I have a piece of tape here, any tape would work, putting it sticky side up, and I'm placing onto it three ink cubes right up against each other. Now I'm going to create kind of my own ombre or blended color ink pad this way. Now I'm going to take my stamp and ink it up with these ink pads. Now notice there is a gap between the colors. So you want to make sure you cha-cha-cha back and forth. You can see me going side to side to make sure that all of the stamp is covered with ink and also to help blend the colors between. Now I'm going to stamp this, but be sure to look at your stamp first and make sure you have complete ink coverage on it. This is more important with ink cubes because there is a better chance that you might have missed a spot than with full ink pads. So always check your stamp before stamping. Now I know I just told you that it's best to ink up your stamp by picking up the ink cube and inking the stamp as opposed to the other way around. However, here it's easier to leave the ink pads on my desk because they are taped together just temporarily and I can see through the stamp to make sure I'm inking all three colors. 
Okay, let's get started with our first example. Now this one, I'm going to do some diagonal stamping on the background. So I'm starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And it's top folding, by the way. And I'm using my T ruler and a pencil to draw really super light lines as guides for my stamping. I'm not measuring it out, but rather just using the width of my ruler to create the lines. So after I put down my first set of lines, I go and add another line in between each so that the areas aren't as wide. Really, you could measure this out if you want to. You could eyeball it. I just find it's faster for me to do my stamping if I already have some pencil lines there that I can erase later. Okay, so I'm going to go for a really colorful background where I have the same message stamped repeatedly in lots of colors. And I'm going to do that ink blending technique with the three ink cubes that I just showed you. So I'm starting out with the same color combination I used before, and I'm stamping it in between the pencil lines randomly on the note card. Now I will say I have this great uh, acrylic block here. This one's from Catherine Pooler, and I have centered my sentiment between the two guidelines that go across the center of my block. That way when I go to stamp, I just line up the guidelines with the pencil lines by looking with my head above the stamp and through the acrylic block. I kind of edit that out so you don't have to look at the back of my head so often. But grid line blocks are really helpful in getting straight stamping. Okay, so I'm going to create another three mini ink cube ink pad here. This time I'm using some blues and some greens. I'm going to do the same process. I did clean my stamp off really well before switching because I want to make sure that none of that pink ink is still on the stamp before I go to this color. And I always do stamp first on scrap paper. I don't always show that in the video because I try to save some time, but I always stamp on scrap paper off screen. That way I can make sure I like the color, that there's no ink left behind from the last thing. And in this case, I decided to change out that third color just for some more variation. Now this isn't really true ombre. Ombre is usually light to dark, dark inks, but I kind of call it ombre where you blend from one color to the next. And here you can see I have some pool to green to lime. And it really is a great way to get more out of these sentiment stamps. And it would be difficult to do this with a, full, a bunch of full ink pads. So this is handy to have some cubes for. And then I'm going to finish off the card by doing some blues and purples together. This card would also be fun if you did like a rainbow of colors going across the card. Okay, so after I did the blues and purples, I have some spots left over. So I just go back to some of the previous colors and I fill it in. But every time I really wipe off my cloth with my stamp chamois or a baby wipe, and then I rub this stamp really clean with a dry cloth. That's a microfiber cloth that I use. You could also use a Hero Art stamp cleaner, the Ultra Clean stamp cleaner, if you have some pesky colors left behind on your stamp. Okay, so let's wrap this up into a card before we move on to the next technique. I have a pink cardstock strip going across the card, and I thought it would be fun to do a score line right up against the edge on both sides of this. So I'm using a scoreboard just to put like a nice, really deep crease along the edge. You can see it there, and it really just gives a nice little detail to this simple cardstock strip. Now this cardstock actually matches the inks. That's one of the nice things about the reverse confetti inks is that the cardstocks really match well with the inks that they have. Now for the main sentiment on this card, I'm using an older reverse confetti stamp set called Crazy About You. I really like the style and the look of these sentiments. They can be used for masculine or feminine cards. And I thought that this uh, You Are So Loved sentiment fit perfectly onto a heart die cut. So I'm stamped it with Versamark ink and I'm heat embossing it with white embossing powder. I'm using little craft foam squares to add some dimension to it and adding that right to the card. Now I decided to leave this card as is and not add any accents, which is kind of hard for me to do, but I really wanted to keep the focus on those fun, colorful sentiments in the background. And for the matching envelope, I used a Simon Says Stamp V flap envelope. It's white and I really like that deep V design. And I used the reverse confetti mouse mail stamp set. This has some cute images in that sending smiles across the miles and the little envelope are perfect for the flap of your envelope. 
Okay, so now on to the next card. I'll be honest, the day that I was creating these cards, my crafting mojo seemed to be long lost. So I did what I often do when I'm feeling not so creative. I think back on cards that I've made in the past and I just recreate those cards using the newer products that I'm really wanting to use. And that's what I did today. I looked back on my blog for sentiment card ideas and I found this one that was on mixing sentiments. I'll link to the video here. And I decided to create a card very similar to that, but with today's technique. So I picked a bunch of reverse confetti sentiments and a die, which I'll show you in a moment. And I lined them up onto a white note card. Sorry, my head got in the way there. And I just kind of planned where I would stamp them. Now on another piece of cardstock, I'm actually going to do the stamping. And I'm using the same technique that I showed you before. However, all the sentiments will be stamped with the same three combo of inks. So I'm going to start with my bottom two sentiments. These are the two that are going to go right up against the bottom of the card. Testing it out here, and then I will go ahead and stamp it to the right hand side of my white cardstock. This white cardstock piece is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I did try my first color combo and I felt like that third ink was a little too light, so I did change it out. That's one of the reasons you want to test it. And there I inked it up and noticed it wasn't all ink, so I went ahead and inked it up some more. You always want to be careful. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start filling up my background. I did the three sentiments on the bottom, starting from the bottom, working my way up. Now I'm gonna leave a break for where I put my die cut sentiment. So I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So this is this uh, sentiment that I wanted on the top of my card. And I'm just going to keep repeating this working my way down until I reach that gap in the center again. And you'll notice that all of the stamping goes from that peach to the red. So you get that blended look across the entire back of the card. It's really fun. Okay, so I'm going to trim this down. So it's about four inches wide and five and a half inches tall so that I can let some fun pattern paper show. This is a new reverse confetti six by six paper pad, and I really like the colors and the patterns here. I decided to go with one of the simple patterns, but there are some fun ones in here I could have used too. I'm going to cut a thin strip of this, and this will just peek out from the side of my stamping. Okay, so now it's time to do my die cutting. I used an older reverse confetti fancy words die set. This has lots of words in it, including thanks, hello, friend, XOXO, birthday, and baby. I'm going to use hello and friend. I die cut each word three times from white cardstock, and I'm gluing each of the layers together so I have a stacked die cut with lots of dimension. This does take time, but it is definitely worth the effort because the hello friend will really stand out. So here are all my die, die cut stacked pieces. I'm just temporarily gluing it onto a piece of scrap paper so that I can hold the pieces in place while I rub the dark red ink pad over the top of the die cuts. This way I can make sure that the color of these die cuts matches the stamping. Because this is really wet because I put a lot of ink on it, I can quickly add some Hero Arts sparkle embossing powder to it without having to use Versamark ink and heat set that so that those die cuts have some glitter to them. Now on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, I glued that little strip of pattern paper right to the edge. Now on another piece of white cardstock, I'm just rubbing that same red ink pad along the edge so I can create a little paper strip that is that same red with the sparkle embossing powder on it. After I've heat set that, I'm going to trim it down so that I can glue this behind my stamped panel. I'm just going to let a little bit of that sparkly red show from, the be from behind the stamping. Okay, so now I've covered the back of that stamped panel with some adhesive, and I added a piece of white craft foam to it. Then I glued that to the front of the card. That white craft foam will allow that piece to pop up and make it through the mail nicely. Now it's time to use some strong liquid adhesive. This is the Tim Holtz Distress Collage Me Medium to adhere those die cut pieces onto the card. I'm using a T ruler to help me make sure that I glue them down nice and straight. Now after I let this dry, I realized I wanted to add some little flowers from an older reverse confetti stamp set. This is this very sweet stamp set. So I peeled up the H and E from the hello, 
did some stamping, and then I glued it back down. I just wanted to have like a flower peek out from behind that. And then I went ahead and added some more stamp flowers here and there on the card. And I'm using some strong liquid adhesive to glue down some iridescent jewels to the center of the flowers and kind of scattered on the card. I really like how the iridescent jewels pick up those peach colors that I used on the card. And the iridescent glitter and the sparkle embossing powder matches nicely too. I really like how this background blends from that light peach to the darker red. And again, I used the mouse mail stamp set to decorate the envelope. Before we go, I wanted to recommend one thing. This is really something fun that I'm excited about. Reverse Confetti also just came out with a kindness card die set and stamp set. The die set has this rounded corner rectangle that's perfect for making quick cards. Then the kindness card stamp set has all these sentiments you can put together to create really quick little message cards to give to someone. You can do, I think you're fabulous because and list some things or thank you for and list some things. Lots of different things you can put together and these are quick and something that you could stamp, maybe have your kids write messages on and give to loved ones or strangers. I'm always about kindness and this makes it super easy. So this one here, I'm just showing it very quickly. I did the same technique that I've been showing you all along in this video, but I did thank you so much for, and now I'm doing the little dotted lines, and my kids are going to write quick thank you cards with this. We have lots of thank you cards to write from Christmas, and this is something quick, but still handmade, so it's extra special. On this one, I decided to trace my stamping with a shimmer pen, so it has some sparkle too. Now for this kindness card, I thought I would show you that you can use three very different colors of ink cubes together for this. Here I have like a red and orange and a blue. And when you do this stamping, you end up with what looks like a rainbow going across. I wish I had that yellow ink cube for that. Another advantage of using the little mini ink cubes is that you can ink up each part of the stamp differently, which would be hard to do with a full ink pad for many different design stamps. Here I'm inking up each word with a different color, which really makes this simple kindness card a little more interesting because I use three colors instead of one. Again, this would have been a little trickier with a full ink pad and many sentiments would be hard to do with a full ink pad. So there you can see the results on those kindness cards. These are gonna be really fun to do with the kids. Okay, so there are some tips for using your mini ink cubes. I hope this is helpful, helpful to you and that you'll give it a try. Supplies are listed in that YouTube description below. As always, on my blog, I have more information for you and a couple other videos there in the middle that you might like. I appreciate you spending this time with me. I hope you return soon and have a wonderful day.